seamless made with Ruby Ray and I don't have Ruby Ray installed right now. Not a big deal. I'm going to turn on wireframe. So I really like the structure. So I was thinking maybe this could be the base of one of the arches. Um, it's got a lot of cool stuff going on with it. Um, it's been pretty versatile for, I've used it for several different projects. So, um, we need a point A, let's give it a little bit, uh, let's then stretch it a little bit. Um, yeah, something, the problem with stretching these assets is it's also going to stretch the stair stepping as well which is something that I usually try to keep pretty um, even, so I may not actually do that with this one. Depends. Um, I think if I exaggerate it enough and it really looks like intentional, it's probably fine. As long as these don't read as floors. Because, um, I just think it'd be strange if the floors like slowly got a lot taller as the building goes up. I mean, it's not really out of the question. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm limiting myself too much. So. <laughs> Yeah, let's because uh, I do like the shape. Um, so some of the stuff we can do with this, um, there's all kinds of distortions you can put on things. So this is going to break the geometry a little bit because we have ungons at the top. That's probably not a good one to do. You're going to ripple it. You're probably going to ripple it in, in um, only like the X and Y um, axis. Let's see what other things. We can do here the wave and squeeze and um, I'm gonna put a cylinder on it uh, FFD is what it's called you can see this cage that you can warp and distort you use it all the time so you know if I really stretch this and then arc it you know that can kind of kind of make what I'm what I'm kind of going for here Um, I, so if I want to entertain the notion of having this crisscross network of arcs, um, there are some shortcuts to, to achieve that. And so, let's see here, what's the best way to go about this? Okay, we're going to take a large torus and we're going to squish it. We're going to reset transform. That's gonna just convert it to like an editable mesh. Uh, you know, well, might as well make this a poly. And I'm gonna make a couple others here. Maybe select this edge loop here, bring it in. Um, maybe chamfer it a little bit. It's just uh, really not necessary. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm laying the groundwork for making a bunch of arcs. Um, I bought a great script that helps do this. So these are these are pretty big compared to the size of one of these, and one of these is actually quite large. So let me make sure first of all that the units are set up properly. This is really important with 3D. Um, Hmm. Oh, it appears that I've uh, when I switched monitors, I messed up all my windows. Hopefully, this won't become a problem later on. Um, at least layers is embedded. That's good. Um, all right. Um, what were we doing? Oh yes. So I'm going to union these guys. Um, you know, attach them as elements. And why is there some, there's a window in front of, oh, uh, I think the fact that I'm script streaming is glitching up my UI a little bit, usually doesn't do this. Okay, I'm gonna attach these guys. Object texture, poly, uh, do not keep original objects. Uh, it's just a really quick boolean. Uh, it's not even a boolean. It's just literally just attaching these. So now we have we still have them as sub objects, but they're considered one object in Max. 
And that is important because we're about to do something really cool. Um, let me, now here's the part where I added and rearranged a bunch of buttons. And these, I'm trying to find uh, one that does, oh, 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 I think I know where it is. Nope, not that one, not that one. Aha! All right, we're gonna make the gravity more like 20, actually 25. Um, we want, let's say, let's say 70. Mm, not with quite that many, let's say 60 arcs. So we're gonna solve that. We'll see that what's happened. Oh, it did it in between. That's interesting. It's actually not what I wanted. Um, yeah, this one works differently. I kind of forgot about it. Um, I thought that they would drape. Okay, we have another tool that we can do. Oh, that's fun. Oh yeah, we're going to save this before anything else. Um, I'm just going to call it demo for now. Really generic name that I will probably regret making. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I did was I, I just put this network of crossing splines, uh, which is really cool for things like roads. And um, they, what's kind of cool is that they, they don't completely intersect each other, they overlap. Um, and I can always add turbulence to them later. Uh, it's not actually the original goal. Um, so let's go in here and delete all the shapes. Uh, no, we don't want these guys anymore right now. Um, so we have something else called Copwebs, which is another modifier I bought for um, this purpose. Uh, I probably should have um, probably should have practiced around with my new UI before like streaming this. It's kind of embarrassing having to look through all the buttons I'm, I just put down. Um, uh, I can always run the script. Um, so to give all of these custom uh, buttons, and what I really should have done was just make my own um, icons for the buttons. Um, and where is it? Well, um, That's weird. I should have a box pop up when I ran that script. Uh, I'll just not do this um, if it takes forever to do, but it's really cool. Um, <laughs> um, Is it not? It, it's almost as if it got deinstalled. Uh, oh, the joys of migrating versions. I, I really, really don't like to do this. 
uh, I, I wanted to upgrade uh, mainly because of the spine tools. Um, there's some major improvements in this version for that. But the trouble I have to go through to get the UI to where I wanted it is not great. Um, There's this like phantom window happening. All right, well, I'm just gonna give up on trying to find it right now because it's really boring trying to look for it. I, I really don't know why. I'll try one more time here. I worry that when, if anyone's an expert on Windows 10, um, I this problem with like, if I switch monitors um, and I had, if I'm using multiple monitors and I switch the orientation of monitors and I switch monitors, I will have windows that are phantom windows off on the other side. And I know there's a shortcut to get them back on, but I'm wondering if what's happening is I'm, this window was popping up on another window. If someone in chat has any, um, suggestions about, uh, about that, that would be great. Um, Wow. Okay, so it's one of these things that you can't um, you can't put on as a um, as a button because it's an it's an MCG thing. It's a, okay, so it's a plugin. I still could have sworn that I made a button out of this. So I run it and nothing happens because oh man. I really maybe should do something else before I try to stream this. <sighs> Why is nothing showing? Maybe I need to have... Make a couple other objects here. Oh, I think I remember how to use this one. I think I have to make a spline object first. And then, yeah, this one is very unintuitive. Oh, and still not, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a new one that I didn't remember that you have to do this certain thing for it. All right, so birth object list, here we go. So first of all, we're gonna detach this into multiple sub, um, detach all the elements, see now they're separate objects again. And now I can select the spline, which is now has a cobwebs modifier on it. Okay, I completely forgot that I had to... I really don't like these modifiers that require you to make, put something into the viewport that you're not ultimately going to use. It's, so you, you guys got to witness the joys of, like, that. And it's funny, I had a bunch of viewers and now they have all gone away. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we don't want to watch this, like, person mucking around and, like, um... Alright, well now I can actually make cool stuff. Um... Alright, so back to this. Cobwebs, birth objects... This one, and this one... Make spacing noise. 
And we want to have gravity affect this. Um, we're going to have it go up in a positive direction of about, let's say, 3,000 centimeters. So this thing's really big. You can actually go in and measure here. And we're going to make a new floater here so I can keep track. Um, so this is pretty handy. I would normally put this on a different monitor, though. Um, so yeah, so we're we're looking at five thousand three hundred sixty three centimeters for just this alone, and so when we go back to this, let's make this um, two thousand. Just see what this. Yeah, well, no, I think my original instincts are good. Make it three thousand, um, and. Hi. Um. Let's see. So when named the Karma Panda says hi, hello. Um, it doesn't say where you're from. Um, it's supposed to give me a little Twitch icon if you're from Twitch or oh no, you're from Twitter. Yeah, this is Periscope. Cool. Hello, hello, the Karma Panda from Twitter. All right, I am finally actually able to make stuff. Um, as I explained earlier, I um, I was troubleshooting. Um, all right, so we've got this. We are going to format random spacing noise location. Now with ends. That all looks good. We have a gravity min max range. I kind of like this idea. This gives it a little more variation. Yeah, let's actually make this about 800 range of min and max, and we'll make this back to 2800. This is the kind of base range. And generate splines. Boom! Yay! This is what I always wanted to show. Is I wanted I have all these cool arcs, and I wanted to show how you can arc between uh, stuff. Now, what's interesting is that they're they're cross connecting. I think that's something I haven't generally experienced. Although I haven't used these shapes yet, but this is the kind of thing I wanted because now I can stroke these splines and I can hang stuff off of them, um, and so. So yeah, so this is about 89 meters long. We're actually going to need these to be much larger. But what's great is that we can um, we can just keep generating um, just keep generating this again. So um, this is this is what's great about um, this way of working. So right now, review mode. You know, keep this the same by grouping it quick, scaling the group. Gonna reset. Uh, whoops. Um, stay the group. Ungroup, and then um, reset transform on these guys. And I will. Uh, I will eventually hide these um, torus shapes. So. Um, so I don't know if. Um, I don't know if when I generate this again, if, um, if it'll rewrite that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Let's see if I can get rid of these cross lines. Format. Let's, let's just play with this a little bit. Right, we have radial. We have spiral. Oh, this is interesting. You pick up, pick a target object. So I don't know if it's better to just stream the stuff I already know, or stream be playing around with stuff. It's, uh, uh, it might actually be more entertaining to watch the play process, but there might be more downtime while I'm just like looking at stuff because I've never done this before. So you've got a target. Oh, that's pretty cool. I can I I can actually see how this could be quite useful. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's let's actually run with this here. Also, let's uh, make these a lot smoother. Let's make the steps like six. That's kind of the standard. Um, hmm. Uh, it's still looking a little too. Um, I think the not type Bezier is a little better. Um, I 
So what I can do is I can make targets in the center of each one of these. So we're going to leave these splines alone for a second. Uh, we're going to make another one of these. So really just for the sake of scattering stuff, um, I'm totally going to delete these, these toruses later. So I'm going to make a simple sphere. In a align said sphere, um, uh, I'm gonna make a couple copies, or yeah, we'll make copies, not instances. It's no biggie right now. Align, boop, align, boop. Select all by color, and then we're going to raise them up here. Raise the bigger ones up more. Um, little ones go down to maybe something like this. Um, all right, now we're going to run the script again, only this time. Well, here's the challenge is I may have to have, I'm probably going to have to do this separately. I'll have to do this separately for each one because you can only have one target. Now I could try it so that um, each, all of these have set our one object. So that, this is back to the play part. This kind of thing is just really, um, just have to be willing to experiment. Um, I don't look at documentation nearly as much as I just try stuff. Um, so all of these are separate. Uh, we need to we need to add these little ones, and because um, this has been attached, it's now a single object, so we can go to pick object, and um, now let's try generating these guys. All right, so what it's doing is it's it's moving these. Yeah, it's kind of what I wanted, but I think what would actually be better is to just um, do this all separately. So. We're going to make, uh, I'm going to make five lines. Um, I'm going to delete this. I wonder if I can save settings in this. Sometimes I'll just take a quick screenshot. Um, and, um, So we're going to delete this and just going to make Actually, I didn't change very much. So when you use this as the target. I actually don't remember which one is selected. What's that one? All right. I'm only 
only vary it by 500 this time. I'm gonna make the steps 10. I'm gonna make the Bezier so I can change the handles. Let's try center. Still willing to play with stuff here. Hmm, hopefully it's not gonna crash. It shouldn't take this long to generate. I'm only doing 20 of them. It's funny, it's been really stable. Oh, there we go. This is interesting. Location surface. Hmm. Yeah, see, I've never, I've never done this before, so I'm, uh, See what Ivy does. Okay. It's pretty interesting because oh I forgot to detach these, that's why. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not on top of my game here. Um Alright. Now now it will work properly, so quick okay, object. So now we have a much better way of comparing like what this does. So I don't know, this is, seems kind of glitch-like. Let's try order. This is selected, this is selected, nothing happens. Okay, let's try random. Hmm. Uh, it kind of worries me when it starts doing that. It makes me think it's going to crash. Nope. It's interesting how it was so much faster earlier, though. I'm kind of inclined to close and restart the program. But this is really just a playground at this point. Okay. So it's interesting about this is that just because there's a target doesn't mean that um, they're all going to go to it. So, you know, this one... No, this one didn't go, uh, this one didn't touch the target at all. <laughs> oh, it's because we have main splines and sub splines, so they both have to be target. Okay, that makes sense. I don't always read these headers. <laughs> so it looks like now they're coming from the origin. It's kind of interesting. Oh, because I have to pick this object again. It's not the best design. I mean, it makes sense now. It's just not the most intuitive thing. So that's why it'll just default to the origin if um, if you don't have a target object selected. All right, so this is more of what we're talking about. So the idea would be I would then delete this. I have all these arcs I wanted, except. Yeah, it's kind of a mess. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly what this is doing. You know, it's coming to the, they're, they're all coming to these certain points. And the points are inside of this thing. I'm going to make the transparency. You kind of see where these are. So they're, they're converging at the surface of this. Hmm. Hello, um, uh, uh, Fader Kit. Uh, you have met me at Magic Fest. What am I working on today? Well, I'm actually just playing around right now. I was going to make this um, city with all these arcs, and I was thinking about different ways to generate the arcs. Um, it was going to have all these big arcing structures with these, like, pod-like rooms kind of hanging 
from uh, like hanging underneath them. Um, this is kind of a follow-on to some of the drawing I was streaming uh, less than a week ago, a few days ago. And um, so this is a brand new install of 3ds Max, um, and I'm kind of learning. I debated whether or not even to stream this because I knew there'd be a lot of like trial and error. Um, what I could do is just completely wipe all of this and just try to make some cool stuff with like, you know, what I already have. At least I learned a lot better how the cobweb modifier works. Um, I had this really... I could swear though that there is a much better way to do this that I'm not going to get... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm going to try one more thing before I abandon the arc thing because I don't really like the way the cobwebs one work. The, the, the cobwebs one works, works really well with other stuff. Um, this one, we're going to make a Taurus again. This will be my redemption here if I get to work. I could swear that that Wire Chaos app, um, uh, or not app, but like plugin was like the thing that I could, I could use for this and it would all work. You know what I think I did is I think I just made gravity. I thought gravity was a would. You know what I think I know why it didn't work the first time. I could have avoided all of this by just upping the gravity by like a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure that's yes. That's what it was. See, I'm used to working. I I tried this out before, but it was on small objects, and I thought that the gravity would be this percentage of the overall like bounding box of the shape. But instead, it's this like it's it's set to world space. So I can make this like a thousand. Yes, this is what I wanted. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete these and do it uh, with a little bit. I wish there was a way to pinch these things, add a little more tension. Let's try, let's try 1500 for gravity. That's more of what I wanted, yes! Ah, sweet victory. I wonder what happens if I make it negative. Um, then I don't have to worry about flipping this. Um, yes, sweet! Yeah, so this is why I did the multiple toruses before, is I wanted to have this crisscrossing network. It kind of looks like one of those like data visualization kind of network visualization kind of things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you think it's um, it's good to stream it. I, um, I, I, I actually really enjoy this process. It's it's a little stressful when I think that like people are watching and getting bored or judging me for like not knowing what I'm doing, but really a huge part of my working process is about um is about experimentation and um all right so i'm gonna make a separate layer for all these guys we're gonna call it splines now we need to stroke them um now one thing that i don't like about this particular uh plugin is i'm gonna have to go in and i'm gonna have to mess with these just a little bit um, because they're just there needs to be a little more variation um, they all kind of converge in the same space I mean that maybe that's not a bad look I, let's let's um let's run with it for now I might end up um, end up kind of vary adding variation to it. All right, so I'm gonna save this now. I have something we want, and so there's this great um, thing. Uh, that's weird. Why did it delete in the viewport when I select it? Okay, uh, we're going to go to sweep scale. This is an interesting. Um, but yeah, put a normal sweep on, and so we're just gonna make it a cylinder for now gonna make the radius like 60. Oh, this is a make it cylinder. Just makes it one parameter instead of make, let's actually make it a hundred. So this thing's about so this is this is what something two meters wide would look like. That's actually not nearly big enough. This whole thing this whole thing needs to get way bigger if um 
you know, do what we want here. Um, group this guy, move him out of the way for now. Yeah, this whole thing needs to, needs to go up quite a bit here. So we're going to go to utilities and we're going to do a, um, a uh, scene scale. So this is one thing that I have not customized in this new install. So um, there you go. The scale world units is very badly named because you can just scale the selection and there, there are advantages to doing it this way. So let's try making it three times as big. And what do we have here? Okay, so all of these scaled and not this properly. Well, it's usually the best way of doing things, but not this case. In this case, we're just going to do standard grouping, scaling. I can measure it here. So we so now we have a hunt this thing is 196 meters in diameter. We need it to be way bigger. Um, because we have these little room like things that are the size of houses. Um, let's make it this big for now. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and just for the sake of uh, consistency, I'm going to center this on the world origin. So I just moved it to the center. Very useful thing. We convert to um, I'm reset the trans. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I need to I need to zero out the transform. Try it again. All right, that's that's what I wanted. All right, this this thing can. Um, there we go. All right, so I should be able to sweep these now, and um, just select all of them here. Why won't sweep work? See, I should be able to sweep multiple splines at once, but what I may end up having to do is attach them. Oh, that's why. Not all objects are splines. Well, they sure seem like splines to me. Editable spline. Editable spline. I have all of these selected. Should be able to attach these and... I'm going to use a third party tool here, try to attach them this way. It's, it can vary between uh, different versions. There we go. Yeah, it's a very handy tool. Oh, this is why. It's because this one had a modifier on it, and so when I zeroed it out, it became an editable mesh. Uh, what I, one thing you can do is you can filter your layers by, if I really wanted to solve why this wasn't working, I would, um, I would alt click this and it would only show me splines in the, um, in, in this, but instead I have just, you know what, this is a bad idea. I actually need to detach all of these. Um, I just remembered why, um, Oh no, it's being slow. This will be a good time to check chat. Oh, lots of chat has happened. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Fader, for sending uh, this uh, <laughs> uh, this group. Yep, it's Max. Brand new Max. I haven't done any project in it. I just installed it. I did a whole bunch of customization, and now I have to remember all the customization I did. Woohoo! Um, so you guys get to watch the pain. Um, all right. Um, I may do a, la a lazy random colors. Um, yeah. See, I just uh, randomized all the colors. It just helps work a little better. So. Yeah, um, you guys get to watch the process of learning um, in action. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
Oh no, I accidentally selected this guy. I'm just going to delete him anyway. Um, you have to be very, very careful in Max about um, about changing wire color because I personally use it um, as um, quite extensively for the final render. And if you, there's no way to undo it. So if you accidentally randomize all the colors, it becomes this like skittle mess. It's bad. Um, I. <laughs> I have I have gone on the official forums and like pleaded the developers to please let us like undo it. Um, there's probably a plugin or something that lets you do non-destructive edits, but I have not found it. Um, so I just do a lot of incremental saving. Um, so anyway, so let's try. We can do a standard sweep for now. I want to flare it eventually, so. Radius, let's make the radius. Again, we'll make it 100 so we can see what a six foot wide. Okay, this is better. So this is, um, each one of these is about six feet wide. So you can imagine a person standing in it. And so this seems like that's enough to allow you to hang a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this whole area was going to have liquid in it. It's going to be this big like bowl or something. Um, not sure if I want to do that or not. What I may end up doing is putting this on a separate layer and hiding it. Um, and let's start playing with camera angle too. Uh, we'll make a, we'll make a plane. I'm used to having V-Ray at my disposal. Um, so I would normally make an infinite V-Ray plane, but I can't. So I'm just gonna make a normal plane. Um, pretty boring. What I want to do actually is make a much more interesting floor for all the stuff to be over top of. Um, so here's a cool, uh, if anybody uses uh, Max, there's this wonderful, wonderful plugin called Mod Mod Zorb, which is like, <laughs> um, let's see, where is it? Which is a weird name. There we go. What this does is it lists all your modifiers and then you can go in and you can randomize stuff. So I could go in and I could actually make these all different um, radiuses and all kinds of other stuff. But really what I want to do is just, um, it tells you how many times the modifier was used. This is really great because if I want to, um, if I want to delete it from everything, I totally can. Um, Right now, I just want to play around with um, thickness and maybe do some randomization. Um, let's see. Delicious Skittle Mets. Definitely have some feelings about Autodesk software after last night. Uh, I'm curious, what happened last night that changed your feelings on Autodesk software? Um, oh, did you did you like lose a bunch of work? Incremental saving is the undo of Autodesk software. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I have I have really good reasons to, to keep using this. I I do realize that there's there's more modern software out there that does stuff a lot better. Um, but for the types of scenes I like to make um, and the functionality that I want to have, um, I'm I always have a wandering eye and I try out a lot of stuff, but I keep coming back to this mainly because of how well it can handle complex scenes. Um, I really like the modifier system for certain things. It really is a shell of um, it, it's really not. Oh man, oh I'm so sorry. Yeah, this this took like a couple of days just to like customize and get all my scripts in and everything. Oh man, I haven't used AutoCAD, but I can only imagine because that one's been. It seems like the longer the software's been around, um, the more different ways they've introduced to customize it. Like with Max, you've got um, you know encrypted MSC scripts, which have to be installed differently. You have MCG, which is their like new thing. You have standard MS. You have like macro scripts, you have all these different things, they all have different like install instructions and it's so annoying to keep track of which one. Once it's up and running, it's awesome. Um, but getting there. Oh man, I hope you didn't lose uh, work, third gatekeeper, when your hard drive crashed. Um, uh, I don't know what you mean by remote control to get it to work either. Um, all right. Um, Anyways, uh, so now we have sweep. We've got this uh, great thing called 
sleep scale. And uh, what I can do, this has a very novel form of control. So rather than controlling a standard like curve graph, what you do is you make um, you make a, like a line and you use that line as your controller for the sweep width. Um, and I actually kind of, I didn't like it at first, but I kind of like it now. Um, so you've got these different control points. They've got longish Bezier handles. Let's turn this into a, um, oh, that's like a really long Bezier. Okay, so this line is our controller. So we can go into, uh, let's get out of sub-object mode. Do sweep and use, use sweep scale. Pick scale curve, I'll pick this guy here, line 007. And then I can go into this line and I can actually change the height of the line, so it's controlled by the Z, and that will change the width of these, um, show it at least. Huh, it's not doing it. Back to the trial and error aspect of this process, why is it not doing it? I think sometimes maybe you have to select them again. Use soil line. Oh, I think you have to treat the elements at whoa! What just happened? Ha! <laughs> That's crazy. Sometimes I get these really weird things and I just save them out because they're <laughs> really interesting. So I only have Arnold Render, which I've like never used, but um, <laughs> um, let's try it just, just to see what it looks like. Yep. That's, that's, um, it's like some kind of an alien toy. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Oh, geez. Um, 10, 10 equals 100%. Well, um, let's go back into that line. Uh, this, this, it's better to just nuke that one, I think. Oh, I know why. The line has to, I bet the line has to be at the origin. But that's what it is. And so it was, it was, it was basically saying if something is like, well, I'm trying to do it, but I, you can't see my hand on the monitor, but if something is this distance from the origin, like say, you know, 20 meters, it's just going to make them all like 20 meters thick. And that's what happened. So it does work just differently than I thought. <laughs> um, but again, sometimes, sometimes I'll do something like that and then I'll scalpel it, um, which is another plugin I love. It lets you slice. So you get this big chaotic mess and then you can take slices of it and you get some, it's almost like, like cutting up digital geodes. It's one of my favorite things to do in 3D. Um, all right, so back to this. Uh, we're gonna do sweep scale again and then this time, um, so I'm going to make the line a lot smaller. I think that the the, the XY scale is arbitrary, um, but so what we actually really want these to do is flare out at the bottom and then get thinner um, as you go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make my ideal profile. Um, And the fingers crossed it works here. What's great about this is it's um it's a great uh, term, but I I got to watch uh, Werner Vinge speak. Um, if you guys know, he's a computer scientist and sci-fi author, and use the term late binding, which is perfect for how I like to work. Um, which means that if it, it means that if things are are parametric, you can make changes right at the end. So I could be almost ready to render. I've got almost everything modeled, and I want to say flare all these out. Well, if I had baked these into normal geometry, I'd have to go into all the vertices of all the bases of these and change it. Whereas this, this is um, this this is late binding. It lets me make changes even at the very last minute. Um, just pretty useful, especially if you're doing client work say this. All right. So back to the trial and error. I don't know why I keep trying new stuff. Like there are tools that I know how to use well. <laughs> um, I, it's like I'm trying to embarrass myself. Um, all right. So back to 
back to this. All right, we're gonna do our steep scale again. Pick scale curve. That should be a lot more reasonable. Um, treat elements as one. All right, that is more reasonable. It's still um, way thicker than I thought it would be. Um, no, 10 equals 100%. What do I mean by that exactly? 10 units? Maybe the, oh, maybe that's what they mean. 10 units, so 10 centimeters on this is 100% of what the former sweep was. So it, I still have to move this way down. But at least you can see, you know, this is kind of what I want. Like I want them to flare out at the bottom. Um, yeah, Digital Geodes is awesome. Oh, man, if you guys want to watch me go into Rhino, I could show um, uh, some, some of that. Let's see, and what is Janus Kane saying? You don't try the new tools, you won't ever know if they're better than the old tools. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I am. I always get trapped by opportunity costs. It's like, am I really using the best thing? Um, I it's um, it's it's totally a trap, but it can be really rewarding. The thing is, you can waste your time learning new tools. Um, like, let's say nine out of ten of all the new tools you you learn, you use them, you go, oh, that's really cool. You maybe use it once or twice, and then you like forget about it. Um, and then, but there's going to be that one out of ten that is just like gold that you just use all the time and it just comes, you know, change. And so the problem is you just don't know which one that is. <laughs> um, so we're going to try making this, uh, I'm going to scale it, make it smaller just for easier management and get way down. All right. All right, um, I'm doing the thing again where I lean way too close to my monitor. Do not you need this. I'm just gonna move my whole monitor closer. Um, I would really appreciate if anybody watching, if they see me like doing this, like slouching, it's like yell at me, tell me, just use the word posture or just P. I'll know what P means. If you just say like capital P or whatever, I'll just know to like sit up straight. Um, I'm really trying to improve my posture. Um, something psychological, so when so something computery like becomes really engrossing, I just it seems like human nature to just want to lean forward, even though I can see fine. I, I don't know. Um, all right, it takes the charm. Let's do this again. Um, Yeah, what's interesting about this, um, yeah, um, all right, let's do it again. New sweep scale. It also is worth noting there's going to be some lag. I'm, I'm doing this on a laptop, um, so, but you would be surprised what Max can handle with a laptop. Um, but still, I think that if I were on like a modern, really powerful desktop, I'd be even um, better. All right, so she comes one and I'm gonna pick the scale curve again. There we go! Woohoo! This is what I wanted! Yes, 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 yes. All right, save. Save, save, save before anything happens to it. Yes! It's exactly what I wanted. Now, what's so cool about this is I can go in and I can change the vertices. I can add vertices. I can like, and all of these should update. It'll be a little bit laggy because it's got to do a lot of, yeah, see? Yes, this is what I wanted. All right. <laughs> Sweet victory. All right, I'll undo that. So yes. All right. Um, so now I wanted to add some like to toadstool-like structures around these bases. And um, so I have a really interesting way of going about this. Um, so I'm gonna duplicate all of these. I'm gonna make a new layer, um, copy them, not instance them. Um, 
new layer. We're going to call this um, arc, arcs merge. We're going to merge all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the transform. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't know about Max, by the way, is um, if you go into Customize User Interface and go into Quads, you can customize the right-click menu, and you actually have four different menus that will go around your mouse with right-click, and they're context-sensitive. So I put Reset Xform or Transform, which I do a lot, um, and um, <laughs> seeing that pretty change pretty instantly is nice. I love that term, pretty instantly. <laughs> it's not completely instant. It's got some lag, but... Uh, that's going to be my new term for lag pretty instantly <laughs> pretty instantly um so yeah you can you can add whatever commands you want with including third party scripts whatever um to the right click so if you see me doing that if you try to follow along in max will be like i don't see this um and that's that's why um so we're going to attach so basically i've i've they are no longer late binding they're all editable mesh and convert to editable poly and then go in and um, I use something called Soulburn Scripts by Neil Blevins. Um, it's absolutely awesome, completely free scripts packs. All of these guys up here are Soulburn Scripts. And he just streamlines a lot of, um, of common things. Maybe use Object Attacher for Poly, Do, and boom, all the same object. Now, now we're in business because now I can use one of my other favorite scripts called Contour Generator. Pick this guy, we're gonna bring it up the z-axis, and we're gonna do, now what I'm trying to do here, you're gonna see it happen in just a sec, but um, is I'm making splines that, that um, like rubber bands are going to, parallel to the ground, be wrapped around these at regular intervals. So the spacing, um, I want these to be spaced kind of a lot, Let's, let's do the standard of making them a little bit bigger than one floor. Let's say 15 meters. So that's 1,500 centimeters. Weld vertices, normalize. Um, let's normalize them to 10. See, sometimes they, they don't, like, I assume that this is 10 centimeters, which is not enough. Um, let's normalize them to just a solid meter. Um, Collapse the single object. No, let's actually leave these as different objects. Um, we're going to make the splines renderable in um, the viewport. Um, uh, actually, I'll do this later. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make them renderable. Um, just make them um, 10 by 10 centimeters. All right, lots of setup. But now here's where the magic happens. Generate contours. It's going to take it a little while, but not too bad. It's going up. You can see in this, um, I keep pointing at my screen. Uh, you can see in this um, monitor here that you can see these little colored lines going up there. Um, it's almost done. All right. So what just happens? We just made a bunch of cross sections. Let's isolate these for a second, viewport bigger. We just made a whole bunch of cross sections that are a little bit glitchy. Uh, no, they're not glitchy. They're just they're just at the top. So we're gonna get rid of these top ones. But now that I have these, I can do other stuff with them. Um, yeah, this is a really really great plugin. Um, so, <clears throat> um, oh, you know what? <laughs> Oh man, I have way too many plugins. So who who here uses ZBrush? Because there's actually I just found this thing on Script Spot that just the in the same function as ZBrush is it snaps to whatever your um, active um, viewport is. That's weird. I didn't want to snap. Um, it, okay, so. For some reason, that cool thing I was about to show, which 100% worked at one point, is not working. But what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to like snap um, your viewport. Yeah. So if you if you rotate it like this, you press S and it goes to the back view. Is this right view? This top view. So it basically snaps to whatever view is closest. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know ZBrush well either, but I know one nice thing about ZBrush is like you can be at some weird angle and if you just like press shift or something, I forget which the key is, but it'll like snap it to like whatever the closest view is that you're at. So um, anyways, so these are all colored by layer, which is really nice as I can just delete these guys and I think I'll also delete these, but I'll keep all the rest. And so you, this is actually a pretty cool pattern right here. Um, now I can do some interesting stuff with this. Um, facts. Now, as of Max 2020, you can finally, finally, finally apply the symmetry to splines. Um, so uh, I might, I might bear these and have some fun with this just to see what I can make because I kind of like this bubbly look. Um, also, I can turn these into edit poly at any time so that they're all um, cylinders. Oh, that's interesting. Edit Poly now by default. Um, okay, so this is something new to Max. Usually, usually, um, yeah, let's, um, let's just make these normal editable spot. That's weird. Okay, so every other version of Max, um, that's done this, has made it so that when you edit Poly, it's supposed to fill these in rather than um, so there's got to be a setting there's no way that um, wow I mean all of these options look um, the same as other versions but that's a that's a big change to how I work so I could google this or I could just abandon it right now because I don't need to do it and it's not entertaining to watch me Google stuff. Um, that's weird. Yeah, it's supposed to fill these in, like you're know, like you're coloring them in with geometry. Oh, I think maybe it's because of the maybe it's because their enable and renderer is checked, which is essentially giving them thickness. I'd like to have a little thickness on them. Um, but I can turn this off. Um, so it could be, let me just delete this, get rid of the whole enable and renderer thing. Um, let me go back into the, my, my spline cleaner um, script here and just uh, go into more tools, basic parameters. Oh, that's weird. Enable and render and enable and viewport are not checked. I have another spline info dialog that I can also use. This is from Soulburn again. Uh, that doesn't show it. Oh, bad posture again. <laughs> yeah. See, if I if I were less less bold I would just do digital painting where it's like you can't really mess it up I mean you can digital paint badly but I'm just looking at the chat people are like say most of the folks here have a troubleshooting love a troubleshooting stream <laughs> Google is basically 60% of my job yep I'm self-taught in 3d and it's been a lot of googling and forums and such because this is this is something I really need to know so see how see how these have thickness um, and I can go edit Enable and renderer, enable and viewport. I wonder, oh, you know what? I think Zorb tools will solve this. Oh, they've got, okay, so, because Zorb tools doesn't just control modifiers, it also controls ba basic objects. So I think that if I go to spline shape, double click it, and go to properties, and whether it's renderable or not, this is weird. It says it's not renderable down here. Uh, just Eighty <laughs> percent. Yeah, I know people who've done like tech support, and they literally like they just they take what the client asks and they just Google it verbatim and then spit out, <laughs> tell them what to do. Um, so this should tell me that I'm in the right section. Well, um, okay, we're gonna do an experiment here. 
I have this. See, what I'm trying to do is get rid of these this thickness because it says enable and viewer. Okay, so I have I have these ones, no thickness. Now let's see if I do if I do edit poly. That's what I wanted. See? Okay, so now I know for sure that through not having to use Google, through humble trial and error, that it's because I have thickness rendered, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I like having viewport thickness. It's it's useful, but it turns out that I'm going to have to get rid of that. Luckily, these are grouped together. It's actually not that tedious to just get rid of these. And a poly, and a poly. Um, but you know what? I don't want to do this now, actually. I just want to know I can do it. So we're all good. Um, get out of isolation mode. Now we're going to drag these down here. Uh, I don't remember exactly where they were, but it's, this is close enough to kind of see here. Yeah, so now, now that we have, I'm going to hide this. What I'll often do is I'll just make a junk layer. I'll just call it junk. This just keeps it and um, turn it off. So if I ever really want to go back to these, um, knowing you can do something for and that the future is an internal mode in software and knowing is half the battle. Yeah, um, very true. I'll put tutorials on in the background sometimes, even though I'm going to remember like 2% of what what went by, but just knowing, I call it eliminating the unknown unknowns. It's just knowing that this kind of thing is possible. I know I can actually go back to the video and actually look at it if I really want to do it myself. But yeah, just knowing what's possible is, is huge. Um, all right, so you can see I've got this kind of rubber banding and it appears that, um, yeah, it appears that I've uh, somehow moved all these. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of repositioning. Um, as you can see, that they're a little bit off. Although, you know, if I, when I add enough thickness to these, having things be a little bit off is actually what gives life to these scenes. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are all familiar uh, with my work, but I um, I try to toe this line between the geometric and the natural, and having just not snapping everything, and making it perfect, is actually like. Um, yeah, I don't actually know why. It is definitely a little more off than I thought. I think it's... Hmm. Yeah, because they were spot on before. But I think... I think I made a backup. Nope, this is my backup. You know, for the sake of the demo, um, I'm not going to deal with it. Um, what I wanted to do is then sweep these again. And... I'm make it a bar, and you can see what's happening here. So we're gonna make this hundred to centimeters thick. Um, that's strange. This is not to scale, I don't think, because that's a, oh no, that's because I added. No, never mind. We're okay. Um, we're gonna make them the width like two hundred. Make it more like 400. Unfortunately, with the welding, um, with this one script, you do end up with this error sometimes. And I'll often leave these errors until the end because it doesn't make sense to clean up everything because oftentimes I, you won't even see it. It'll be obscured. You know, the, I'll choose this camera view and you won't even see it. So, but for the very obvious and very distracting ones, like this, this guy, this guy is no good. Um, we don't want that. So. Yeah, so it comes with this stuff, um, and what it, what you can usually it, it doesn't generally take that long. You just delete vertices until it's not oh, self overlapping anymore. Um, I've been trying to find a really good um, spine troubleshooting script, uh, something that'll not just highlight the errors but uh, like like self overlap. And I could swear I had one, and it kind of worked. Um, all right. 
So yeah, no super glaring distractions right now. And so now that I have this, I can go into offsetting it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select all of them. And go into, oh, I could have just done this. Go into the wonderful Zorb tools again. And um, go into sweep. And what I want to do is I want to adjust the X and Y, the X offset mainly. Um, what that'll do is. Yeah, see, it moves it outward. Like, so if you have your shape, it moves, it moves it outward. So I can then adjust the um, the parameters here to let's try six hundred. And now, if you really want to get fancy, I can bake these unique. So the, right now, the sweep is an instanced modifier, which means that if you apply it to one object, all the objects that it affects, um, if you change one, it's going to change that modifier on all of them. But by making them unique, I can then go in and, um, you know what? I don't actually see the... Um, I don't see the options I was hoping for here. It's kind of strange. Um, I should be seeing the parameters of the box of 300 and... I mean, I don't need to do this because I don't have that many objects. But what I wanted to do was vary these up. So you can normally do a randomizer where you can say, you know, um, that this one will, you know, if 800 is the base, it will range between, say, 600 and 1000. Um, centimeters. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to have this nice, like, flaring. Well, I've got more errors than I thought. Um, I think one way to fix these is actually when I do the contour generator, um, which I did before, is I think I, I think I need to up the threshold for welding vertices. I'm pretty sure that it should be more like 10 centimeters or, or, or something. I'm almost positive that's why um, I got these errors to begin with, but it's not really worth going back and redoing because it won't take too long to fix these. Yep, you can see it right here. This is the culprit. This teeny little thing can just make such a spike. It's crazy. Um, let's see where else we have problems. This is this one's pretty egregious. You know what? This, this one can just die. <laughs> It's not that one's not worth fixing, and I, um, I put it out of its misery. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that one too. It's good enough. All right, so these are all different heights. You'll notice, and but I'll probably <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is um, I want to sculpt some land that these are all coming out of, like different hills, for example. Um, like I wanted to have them over this basin. So there's this like, you know, there's this basin of hot water. Um, it's this part of the world I'm working on. It's like Yellowstone on steroids. And there's going to be this big basin of hot water down here. And the, the whole reason why you want to hang architecture from this thing in the first place is that um, people, it's like this Goldilocks zone of temperatures right up in here. So if you're too close to the ground, it's too hot. And too close to the cold air, it's too cold. But right here, you can kind of keep everything, um, you know, in this nice area. And you might say, well, why don't you just make a dome? Well, the dome would trap steam. But I was going to have these steam collectors that are like, still hanging from all these and oh you know what i can do the cobweb remember that cobweb thing that i tried earlier i don't know if you guys saw me like utterly fail at getting what i wanted with that but it's actually kind of perfect for these i was like i want to have these cross webs that are smaller um so oh man okay this this pink spike is driving me nuts i i, I have to change it um <laughs> the heck is going on here? 
I think I think it's okay. Oh, so this one still has that stupid. Um, forgot to change this one. Um, I think I see the knot. Yep. All right. Such a tiny thing. What? But now, oh you. So for Max users, I, I've talked to a few Max users. Um, it seems like it's not well known um, that you press Shift Z, that undoes undoes your viewport change. So see how I accidentally got out of that? I press Shift Z and I can get it back. Uh, I wish I would have known that one a long time ago. Um, uh, all right, so there's still some spikes, not as bad, not gonna care. Um, what I want to do is I want to use that same cobwebs modifier um, as I had before. Remember that thing I put into junk? It's not so junky now because I'm going to use it. I'm just gonna make another copy. I'm gonna make a layer called cobwebs. Uh, turn junk back off. Change this color. I hate this color, so let's make it something else. I usually don't pay attention to color that much, but too much fuchsia, and that's a problem. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put use the cobweb modifier between all of these, and you know what? I, you know what? I actually think I'm gonna have to detach all these again. Um, might take a little while to do. Oh, I just didn't randomize the color. That's fine. Um, so these should be regular polys. So I go into first of all, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a line because I just learned this or er, earlier in the session that you have to make this line first, and then go to cobwebs, and then. Generate, uh, add stuff to the birth objects. So here's something interesting: is it don't see the ability to add multiple. Am I really gonna have to select all these manually? Almost all of these plugins let you add, um, like select from a list and just batch add all of them. But I think I'm gonna have to. What? Okay, I'm gonna see if I can make this one work. With, well, when it's just one object, so we're gonna, because I don't, I don't want to have to click, 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 click all one of these, if if I can possibly help it. Um, sometimes for the tedious stuff, I'll just like pop on an audiobook or something, uh, or a tutorial or whatever, so that it's not the problem. But try to avoid it when I can. Now let's see if, um, oh, yeah, well, it kind of works. Um, now what I want to do is I want to have these cobwebs mostly in the upper part. And so because this is one object, I'm going to scalpel the thing. Um, I'm going to make a copy of all this. I do this a lot, just making copies. Um, this is... This is a plugin that um, I bought years ago, and it was I I agonized over whether to buy this tool because it was really expensive for one tool, uh, but it's been so worth it uh, because it it's so much more optimized than the standard um, slice in Max. So um, and you can do this thing. Um, of kill and fill, so I can fill the part that it, um, to see, no fill, fill. And so in real time, it can go in and just, it's so fast and it can handle really complex stuff. Um, it's kind of mesmerizing to watch too. But I basically only want the cobwebs to show in like the upper, like two thirds. Um, someone says, I had no idea. I assume that you meant by no idea, you meant, um, about the shift Z. Um, yeah, it's so nice. It was so expensive. I think I paid like 160 bucks for this tool, which is like 
it sounds insane, but for the amount I've used it, um, and if you take all the client work I've done where it was like a pivotal um, part, it was actually totally worth it. Um, usually, most tools in Macs are really cheap. They're you like 10 bucks um, in comparison, but this one's like, this is, they're marketing this one to like architects who are doing um, like cross-section views, um, like these big architecture firms, so they know they can pay for them, but um, I want to make digital geodes and scalpels, like the only way I can do it. Um, so anyways, so we're going to collapse all this and um, yeah. so a lot of scripts are free too. I mean, I, I haven't paid for that many scripts, um, but the ones, I'm, the ones I have, it's totally worth it. Um, all right, so we're gonna do the same cobweb thing we just did. I'm so glad that it can work with one object. And I wanna experiment with the, um, I wanna give them negative gravity so that they're actually arcing with the regs of the arcs. So I think that that could be pretty cool. So I'm gonna go back into next slide. make them 40. Um, so we have gravity min max range. So there's two gravity min max range. There's main slides, slides and sub slides. And this tripped me up before, um, but not anymore. Um, so we're going to make them, I want them to, let's say a thousand centimeters for now. For sub splines, we'll also make it a thousand. Just see what happens. Um, make the step six, not type Bezier, uh, which gives you handles, location. So the surface and volume. So you can basically have it random so that one end of the spline goes randomly into the volume of this object just on the surface. I think I actually, it's not going to make a big difference in this. We'll go with volume and let's try this. I take it a little dial here. I actually kind of like when things lag because it reminds me to do like a body check and I'll usually realize that I'm like, you know, really slouched. Okay, there we go. So they're still pretty even. So it appears that this thing doesn't recognize positive gravity. Well, does it? I Many is nested isolation. This is another great plugin. Um, if so, the Max users in here use isolation mode. Um, what nested isolation does is it basically lets you isolate something, then isolate something within that group, and um, so you have ten different states of isolation that you can burrow down into, um, and it's it's very useful because normally you'd have to unisolate everything and then go into the individual part, isolate it. Um, so this is really nice. So one thing that bothers me about these cobwebs is that they're just too, like, I'm actually going to edit spline and see what, what these are made of. Oh, whoa. <laughs> okay, so clearly my normalization parameter was off because, so, so this is, normalization is like um, where you make the splines that they're the same segment length. And the reason why <laughs> The reason why these are not looking good is because you just have way too many points and that's why it took so long to generate. So you can get out of that isolation mode. Um, I'm going to hide this real quick. Um, so now, now I know why. So look, look the modifier stack because I can go back in. I'll get out of it. It's fine. Steps, amounts, Bezier. So where's the normalization? Spacing noise, location, not within. I'm not actually seeing that parameter. I can always go in and like renormalize it with a different tool, but um, that's really lacking. Um, I mean, I, maybe it's because I said steps 10. 
Let's try one. Do it again. Because I seem to remember this can be way faster. So let's try generating the splines again. Okay, so we go into edit spline again. Okay, so this is what steps is. So what I think the what steps is doing is it's not is I, I can't set that I want a new knot every like 200 centimeters. What it's doing is it's subdividing this. So I bet that if I set steps to two, it's going to like um, it's going to subdivide these. It was a point here, point here. So by the time you get to 10, it gets ridiculous. And that's why it took so long to generate. So I answered that problem. The next problem is, is that regardless of steps, you get these transition points here that are just, um, I want these to be Bezier. I want them to be smooth. Um, it's kind of janky looking right now. It doesn't really follow the way. Um, I want them to be nice and hangy and parabolic. And they're totally not now. And it's very possible that's just the limit of this, this plugin. Um, I can't complain. This is one of the free ones, I believe. Oh, you know. Um, Well, not type Bezier. I mean, Bezier should be the one with the handles. So um, I can try. Oh, I did want to try the Ivy technique. I'm getting distracted here, but like, I'm going to make steps like three um, just so there's some. Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm guessing that the gravity of a thousand is what's making them kind of go crazy, but I can see this being pretty useful. So it's kind of simulating the way ivy like grows around stuff. Um, oh yeah, someone said this is a super nice way to use rendering time, a moment of mindfulness. Yep. Yeah, rendering windows, it's, it's funny, like, um, they're often that at least when I do test windows, it renders, it's often just enough time that I get bored and I want to start doing something with my hands, but not enough, but if I like decide to go browse the internet, I'll end up getting distracted by the internet. So like this window of the worst render times are like, you know, 10 to 20 seconds, at least for me. I don't want to, I think 20 seconds is worse. Like I can, I think I can sit and watch it for 10 seconds. It's kind of my... But usually, like, if, if I'm going to have to wait 20 seconds for something, I'm going to go, like, go on Reddit or something. And then five minutes later, I realize, oh, my render finished. Um, so what I've started doing is just getting a sketchbook and, um, like, just doing, like, doodling while waiting for test renders. Because it's, it, to me, it's much easier to, ta to task switch. Um, also, um, you know, browsing the internet during render usually is very laggy anyway, so... It's a good way to kind of inject in um, drawing time as well. Um, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, so back to this. So I kind of want to experiment with, um, rather than a thousand, let's make it a hundred centimeters for the IV and let's, let's try it again. I'm guessing it's going to stay a lot closer. Yeah. Um, I'm still not a fan of the way it's, it's not drooping the way I want to. I really want it to arc. Um, so center order, I still think that random is probably the best. We already know what target does, um, because I played around with that earlier. Um, uh, I haven't played with spacing noise. I'm guessing I know what that is. Let's make it 50. Or, oh, I guess it's normalized between zero and one. Let's, let's, let's make it one and just see what happens. Um, that's interesting. You don't want that. I don't know what it's doing, but I don't think it's worth the time to figure that out. We just know to keep this zero. <laughs> um, what I'll often do is I'll, once I get settings I like is I'll just take a screenshot and I go into OneNote. And so what I'll, um, this is my kind of master thing and I'll, I'll basically just give myself tutorials. 
Um, I'll, I'll, ha I'll try to assume that my future self isn't going to remember all this stuff. And so I'll often like take, take screenshots and explain to my future self like what to do. Um, and um, so I've just got like a lot of stuff. The, the challenge is organizing it such that I can actually like go back to it later. And so um, since I just took the screenshot, you go to DDS Max, uh, Scripts Plugins, we'll just make cobwebs. Um, and that's actually an old screenshot. I don't know why my new one didn't take, but I'm just going to write, um, keep spacing noise at zero. So I wrote that super smart. I do the same thing in programming when I'm working with stuff I don't touch every single day. Yep, I call it slip back because um, I like to explore software. I like to play around and dip my toes into a lot of different things. And if I don't, I'll, I'll like I'll try something for half a day and then go for two weeks without doing it, and I can't remember. Like it's um, it took me a while to to make a better practice of of keeping notes because I'd always tell myself at the time it would seem so simple I'd be like of course I'll remember that in the future like because because the problem is is my my brain at the time is like I'm really wrapped up in what I'm doing I'm really excited about it and so I assume I'm just going to keep doing it until the next shiny thing shows up and then I bounce over to that but at the time I didn't think I would be bouncing to that shiny thing I'm like oh this cool thing in ZBrush or whatever I'll be doing this for the next couple weeks and I won't have any problem remembering it I lie. Um, so yeah, I think it's part of just maturing as a creator is understanding your your flaws and tendencies. Um, so anyways, so we know we want to keep spacing noise at zero. I'm just going to keep this here for now. I like, I really, I really don't like the straightness, but, um, oops. What I can always do, like if I really wanted to, to get into this, um, I don't really want to do this TDM, but you can always do soft selection with um, with with splines and um, make the fall off. Like um, that's not enough. Um, that's weird. I should have soft selection on. This is the first time I've used this in Max 2020, so I don't know why. I mean, the fall off is definitely enough. Oh, guess not. That's weird. <laughs> okay, we'll try 10,000. It seems like, I guess it's, you know what, it's bigger than I thought because I Okay, we want to bubble this, not pinch it, because we want a parabola. Uh, not that much. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with this right now. This is going to be annoying. Um, I, I bubbled it too much, but something like that. And then what you'd want to do is turn off bubble as you go, and then pinch it towards the end to kind of get what you want. But, you know, by doing this enough, I can kind of make everything hang the way I, the way I want it to. Um, because what I wanted to show was that there'd be a bunch of ropes, like a bunch of, um, bunch of these things that are going across, and I don't, I don't want them to be so this super tight. Um, oh, you know what? I bet I could just use Wire Chaos. I bet I can use this other plugin for this thing, and it'll look like I, I bet it'll look better. I've been spending all this time with cobwebs. Uh, cobwebs is still useful. Um, one thing that cobwebs does is you can do multiple object, do it between multiple objects, whereas in wire chaos you can only do it with one. But this is one anyways. And so I'm going to go into that one, which is getting better with my buttons here. Here, pick object, nice and simple. Make it 40 like the other one. So we'll get to compare them. Make gravity. I love how you can have negative gravity. Makes me feel so sci fi. Maybe 100. Oh yeah, we have to make it like a thousand because of, yeah. Come on. I eagerly anticipate. Okay, yes, this is what I wanted. Man. Um, 
But I actually, I was going to do a bubble. I wanted to have the negative gravity, but I actually, like I just described earlier, since we have stuff hanging from it, let's let's go ahead and make this realistic from a physics standpoint. And just, um, we'll just make gravity 2000. Solve. <laughs> Brains are full of lies, to be honest. Uh, all right, so this is more of what I wanted, except I think I want actually more of them. And I don't want it to be 2000, it's a little heavy handed. I love those few seconds when you're about to do something that you think you're gonna like. All right, yep, that's good enough. Because the thing is, is even though these hang down, keep in mind, we're only working on the top section of this. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna rename this um, sub ropes. I don't wanna rename the objects. Um, By the way, for those of you who um, used to use Max, um, you might remember that the layer system totally sucked. And as of the past, um, I think, four versions, um, it's actually pretty good now. So I used to use this plugin that um, that made layers good, uh, but um, it's actually it's actually pretty good. Um, all right, so. Keep this in here. Actually, we're going to move this to junk. And so now we've got subsplines, sub ropes, move them down. That's more or less what I wanted. Uh, they need to be a little higher. Yeah, something got a little offset with these, unfortunately. It seems because this was this was based on my backup copy, um, and all of these colored ones they got moved a little bit. But again, it's um, the great thing is is I, I go in with Photoshop anyways, and I um, I do a bunch of edits with that, and so I can just like if there's something clipping or whatever, I can just paint it out. It it often takes. A big part of learning how to work this way for me has been about um, figuring out when what's fast to do in 2D and what's fast to do in 3D. In 3D, um, they didn't have Max didn't have layers back when you used it. Oh man, poor thing. That's uh, I have no idea when that was. Um, if you if you really want to feel old, Max is as old as I am. <laughs> Like so, <laughs> um, I I um I haven't been using it for that long, uh, uh, but I do remember when it really sucked. So um, let's see. So I'm going to give all these thickness in the proper way, which is um, rather than using that plugin, I'm going to go to Edit Spline. And then within the viewport, why is it not letting me? Oh, I think I just have to convert all of these to editable spline. That's that's weird. I still think that if I go back and absorb tools again, base objects, spline shape. Oh, you know what? I know why. Oh. I forgot this thing about Zorb tools is that I think I probably didn't have, that's what it was. So remember how I was trying to adjust the spline um, rendering parameters in Zorb tools and I was like, why isn't this option there? It's because I had it on all and not selected. So there were splines with different options. And if there's a mismatch, if there's spline A has this and spline B has that, whatever that difference is, is not going to show up, I think. So I have to have selected. So this is the kind of thing that I might go in, um, I should have a spline section already, but I'll just, I'll just, uh, here we go. Um, uh, 
this is actually applies to not just splines, but um, I'm just going to write something like um, All right. <clears throat> yes, see, now it's there. Yay! Um, yeah, I gotta check one thing here. Okay, uh, I'm just on Discord. Um, so yeah, so now I can choose to make these um, renderable and all should, all should be well, because I, I really want to get a sense of how much visual weight they have. Um, and so for viewport thickness, we'll make it five, five centimeters is enough. Oh, let's make it 10. And, Make the sides like five. All right. Yeah, what's great about this note system is um, I really like OneNote for this because you can make a lot of different block boxes for like little notes, um, which you can't do in Evernote. I spent a lot of time trying to find a good like note system. And something else that's really cool is you can actually copy the text from a window which is pretty useful actually um, for certain like UI things. And then on top of that, it's searchable. So I can go to, you know, see wherever splines are used. So it's, um, it's, um, it's pretty useful. I, I really like it. I, I used to use other tools. I used the brain for a while. If you guys ever saw that crazy thing, it's like a, it's trying to like, look like how organization would actually be stored in the brain. It's like this crazy tangle of nodes. But I found that trying to navigate it, um, and the lag that happened when you had too many, it's better to just use one note. Um, yeah, I know. I One note is like the... <laughs> um, yeah, I'm... If, 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 if a company that was not Microsoft was making something very similar to OneNote, I would use that, but I haven't found anything that's, that Evernote just has some problems with it that just, it doesn't work well with my way of doing things. And the last time I researched Evernote was the closest thing to this. Um, oh, a million text files in the desktop. Yeah, getting a real note system is awesome. I have, what I like about old OneNote too is I can have like all the different software and then um, in the different tab. Um, and so, um, and then the other thing I do with OneNote too is when you paste, um, so let me show an example, like you can have, you can paste in videos from YouTube. And so these are all videos in my like to watch list that I haven't watched yet, but um, this is not the best example, but I can write notes about the videos in this, in this section. So I've got this little, but all you have to do is just paste in the YouTube video and then you can actually like play the video right inside of this, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Evernote, if you if Evernote let you put text in boxes that you could freely drag around, um, like that was like the deal breaker for me when I was looking at it. Um, yeah, I don't use YouTube. I don't like I don't like to keep YouTube playlists. I, I have too many different categories. It's just kind of cumbersome to have playlists. I don't like how they make your playlist public by default. And you have to click an extra box. I'd rather just paste the text, paste the video in where I want it and. So I don't like, I don't really keep playlists really anymore. All right, so what are we doing next here? I can actually start bringing in some geometry and um, like populating this out. Um, I was thinking about maybe adding some structures 
back behind this. Like maybe this is only a part of the city. This is where they, this could be where the algae farm is. I've got this thing where like the algae is growing in hot water. And so you've got like, the problem is, is I, I've got a bunch of different, I have a bunch of different worlds that have some common themes and they overlap, but I haven't really unified them. So you might notice me bounce back and forth between concepts a lot. It's a work in progress. I do actually really like the way this looks from the top. Um, I've been trying to make a practice of taking screenshots. Um, I'm in the process of making a uh, book. This is called Expert Node, by the way. It hides the UI. Um, So anytime I see something cool, I've started making a, ha uh, a habit of just screenshotting it. Yeah, I'm actually, you guys were mentioning food. I might actually go soon. I'm pretty hungry myself. I keep streaming before dinner and then my stomach ends up like... Well, uh, I was going to do some, like, tradi some actual traditional modeling here, but I just ended up doing a bunch of stuff with scripts that I don't really know well, so um, <laughs> maybe next time, maybe next time I'll do the stuff that I'm actually, like, practiced at. Um, alrighty. Um, yeah, I think... Oh, well, yeah, it's 8.30 already in my time, so I think, I think I'm going to go, but I'm going to keep streaming. Um, I'd like to do a lot more regular um, now that my setup, my UI is set up, my OBS is set up, everything's set up. It's a lot easier now for me to do this stuff, so um, thank you for everybody for, um, for coming in. I enjoyed the chat, um, and um, yeah. yeah, it's been very fun. Bye, everybody.